What does it mean to be obsessive? Ask Steve Jobs. His penchant for perfection defined his career and changed the world in the process. So why am I talking about Steve Jobs in a freaking car video? Well, because I believe if he had a Honda Project car, it would look like this. Today, we are going bumper to bumper on Big Mike's Honda Prelude. I just want to give a big old thanks to this week's sponsor, ExpressVPN. If you use public Wi-Fi, your personal information is at risk. ExpressVPN is fast and reliable and protects your data from all those sneaky boys, leet hacksers, chads, and digital gremlins trying to steal your stuff. I use ExpressVPN when I'm shopping for shoes because I don't want any gremlins seeing my shoe size. I don't want people knowing my social security number is 308141789. The best part though, ExpressVPN only costs $7 a month and comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. Take back your internet privacy today and find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description below, expressvpn.com slash bumper to bumper. Take back your privacy today with ExpressVPN. And guys, we couldn't make these shows without sponsors like ExpressVPN. It's a good product. Support the guys who support Donut. The Honda Prelude has always been a little underrated. Honda introduced the Prelude in 1978 right up against the Toyota Celica and Nissan Silvia. The Prelude's power and handling at the time made it a great value. But five generations later, at the end of the 90s, it was more expensive than its rivals. Buyers either bought competing models or went with cheaper options in Honda's own lineup, like the Civic or Acura Integra. So in 2001, the Prelude died without ever getting the massive praise that I think it deserved. A lot of people have kind of forgotten about the Prelude, but one guy didn't. Years ago, Big Mike bought this Prelude from a friend. It was a little beat up, but Mike just wanted it as a daily driver, so that didn't matter. But about a year and a half went by, and Mike started to get an itch. One that couldn't be soothed by ointments or expensive salves. An inch that only new parts and a fresh coat of paint can scratch. From top to bottom, Mike put the Prelude through a complete transformation. When it was done, it set the Honda scene alight. In 2008, this Prelude was in its first incarnation, a beautiful dark Merlot maroon with a carbon fiber hood and chrome wheels. Big Mike also swapped out the engine and did a complete suspension job. If you were into Hondas back then, you probably remember this car because it was a big deal. But Big Mike wasn't satisfied with the build. He went all out optimizing the look of the Prelude again instead of building an entirely new car big Mike rebuilt the prelude with a new look that grabbed your attention like no other Honda before it big Mike stripped the Pinot paint job and resprayed it with forest service green that's right forest service the agency that looks after our national parks has its own paint and it doesn't even have a paint coat it's just called forest service green Big Mike rebuilt the Prelude with an even bigger eye for detail the second time around, becoming an even bigger figure in the Honda scene in the process. Like version one, Prelude version two was a huge success. Two times now! Big Mike had changed the Honda game. Surely that would suffice. Wrong! Steve Jobs had helped Apple change the tech game two times with both the Macintosh in 1984 and the original iMac in 1998. Big Mike did the same thing with both versions of his Prelude, each time changing people's perception of how a Honda could be built. In 2016, Big Mike decided it was time to do it one more time. This revision would prove to be the most radical, not just for Mike, but it would be perhaps one of the most outlandish and obsessive Honda builds ever attempted, like Apple did with the iPhone, Big Mike poised himself to change the game once again. Let's start with the big picture stuff. You look at the engine and right away, you know this thing is different. Big Mike didn't opt to use the standard H22 mil that originally came in the car. He swapped that out for an F20B, an option that came in Japanese Accords in the late 90s, early 2000s. As it sits now though, it's been modified just a little bit. Right away, the blue valve cover catches your eye, but this isn't just any regular F20B valve cover. No way, Grandpa. Now in stock form, the engine is mounted with a natural backwards 
slant. And Mike, he didn't like that. He wanted it to look like it was sitting flat. So instead of remounting the engine, he had the valve cover sectioned, meaning that about an inch of height was taken out from the middle. Then the top was repositioned so that it was flat. He also removed the oil fill cap, which brings the cleanliness to a whole nother level. When you look at the cover next to the stock piece, it's obvious how different it is. But if you didn't know, you might not notice it. And that's my favorite kind of stuff. There's building for the sake of being radical, but then there's stuff like this, which is radical for the sake of being better. And that takes some real craftsmanship. Air enters the engine through a custom intake in the headlight, one of my favorite features of the car. The air continues through the air filter into a Garrett GTX 28 Turbo, which itself is fed by one of the most beautiful equal length headers I've ever seen. Looks like a bunch of snakes. This custom plenum further charges the air before it hits the velocity stacks living inside. What's the result? About 460 hertz pers and 360 turks. The power is impressive, but even more so is the care and execution of this engine bay. Have you ever seen a prettier four banger in your life? No, trick question. Fun fact, the blue valve cover was intentionally matched to the stock Honda blue oil filter. <laughs> and the braided oil lines share the same blue hue. The detail in this car is astounding. I mean, the freaking dipstick handle is CNC machined. And if you look closer, which is a thing that you should do with this car, you notice that every single bolt has been converted from traditional hex pattern to Allen head, complemented by fancy dress washers. This trend continues throughout the entire car, including a ton of bolts that you can't even see. That's nuts. Actually, it's bolts. And the extreme fabrication doesn't end in the engine bay. No oh boy, you thought we were done? We're just getting started. Up, up, up. Let's start at the front. The bumper lip is a one of a kind. It's half June aftermarket lip and half OEM Honda. Big Mike fused together the best of both worlds to make something all his own. This intake right here have some of you big Honda guys scratching your heads, I guarantee it, because it looks stock, right? Well, it's not. It feeds the oil cooler sitting right behind it. It looks stock because it borrows angles from these smaller intakes on either side. By using elements already present on the car, this totally unique piece looks like it should have been there all along. And that's my favorite kind of build. This is one of my favorite cars. Even if you didn't know anything about Preludes, one look at these fenders, and you know that there's something special about this car. The wide body flares give way to a pressure relief zone behind the front wheels. This isn't a piece that you can go out and buy. It's completely original. They took the stock Prelude fender, laid some clay over it, and added about 35 millimeters of width to each side of the car so the fenders could cover these big old tires. There isn't another Prelude like this on the planet, but Mike's team didn't go overboard with the design. It's still looks like something that could have come from the factory. A really aggressive factory where they produce anger. The side skirts are custom too and reinforce the motorsport inspiration for this build, both aesthetically and in function as well. The no-nonsense theme continues in the trunk. One of my favorite features about this car is the trunk release, which is just a little loop right here. You pull it, boom, there's the trunk. And I want you Honda fanboys to look real close. You notice anything different? Hmm? Do ya? You stumped? Normally in a Prelude, the indentation for the spare tire is offset to the left. Now this wasn't gonna do for my man Big Mike because my man Big Mike got a little thing for symmetry. So he reworked the entire floor of the trunk to put the indentation in the center. Also with the trunk open, you can see the care that was put into placing the fuel filters and the surge tank. It's like a minimalist piece of art. You can also see how the roll bar and cage are integrated into the chassis. This prelude be stiff. 
In the driver's seat, it feels familiar, but still very race car. That's because instead of ripping out all the door panels and the dash and replacing them with sheet aluminum, like a lot of dudes do, Big Mike and his team wanted to retain the feeling of an OEM Honda interior. So what they did was take the stock dash and door panels, fill in all the unnecessary vents and switch spaces and covered them in beautiful Alcantara. I wear Alcantara underwear. The gauges have been replaced with a singular AIM digital display and a rye wire control panel sits where the radio used to be. With these two components, Big Mike can control every function of the car in a real streamlined way. You know when Steve Jobs unveiled the iPhone in 2007? People were stunned that the thing only had four buttons. I think he'd like this setup. The shifter in this thing is a work of art all of its own. It's constructed of just a few CNC machine pieces. It looks like something out of a rally car, if not a spaceship. Now, Big Mike wanted to keep the booths open so that people could see the components. And the shifter is set up, so you only have to move your hand a few inches off the wheel to shift. I don't wanna go down here. I don't got time. Time me. Wow. And now my favorite part of every show. Main. Ignition. <laughs> oh, it smells like high school. Getting a close look at this Prelude can be overwhelming at times. It's without a doubt one of the cleanest builds we have ever featured on this show. Everywhere you look, there's another perfectly executed detail just waiting to reveal itself. When Big Mike unveiled this car at the SEMA show in 2016, it started getting attention, a lot of it. And it was selected as a top 10 build for the entire show. Do you know how many cars there are at SEMA? A lot, I've been there, I've seen it. At the time, the SEMA top 10 was dominated by muscle cars and hot rods, but there was Mike with his one of a kind Honda. An immaculate build like this can be a little intimidating, but that wasn't Big Mike's goal. He says there's nothing in this build that's impossible to do in someone's home garage. He set out to build this car as a business car to show what he can do, but also to prove that it doesn't matter what kind of car someone starts with. Theirs can achieve greatness too. Big thanks to Big Mike for letting us walk around his car and sharing it with us today. To follow more of his work, check him out on Instagram, at the Big Mike, and check out his website, thinkbiggerproject.com. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter, at Donut Media. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, at James Pumphrey. Got a lot of new shows coming out this summer. To make sure you don't miss any of them, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you wanna buy some merch, go to donutmedia.com, join the mailing list to get 10% off your first order, and be the first to know about new drops, uh, if you like this video, hit the bell, ding, ding, ding. If you have a special car that you want to see featured on this show, let us know in the comments. I love you. <laughs>